Hit it again. Oh, okay. there's my husband helping me with technical issues. If you like what you see, come and get it with me. I know you deserve all you want. Cause your heart's made of gold. But don't wait till you're old. If you want it, I get you some. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to my channel for the Bravo Breakdown with Jolene. In this live, we are going to be roasting and recapping Everybody Loves Tom, the podcast, the amazing Grammy Award winning 9.9 thousand views on YouTube show where Tom Sandoval talks about Tom Sandoval things. And you guys have asked me to roast and recap it. So I am here to roast and recap it all and talk about other, you know, Bravo television things as they come up. But today we're going to be listening to episode three of Everybody Loves Tom. You can find it everywhere you find podcasts. Um, and also he has a YouTube channel if you so choose to support Tom Sandoval, aka Tom Sandy Butt of Vanderpump Rules. All right. Oh, you can hear me well? And okay. Okay, thank you. We were having some audio issues, so my husband helped me out. So shout out to Hype Man Husband, Chell. And you guys, feel free to shout out and share your opinions in the live chat. Let me know how you're feeling. Again, we take a comedic look at all things Bravo television. And today, we're going to be taking a look at Tom Sandoval's Everybody Loves Tom, episode three of his podcast. We're going to be roasting it and recapping it under fair use. So there you go. Um, Tom Sandoval, this is season, season two, I believe it is, of um, Special Forces. Uh, I don't know if you guys have watched Special Forces. I watched one episode and then the most recent episode because it shows Tom Sandoval pooping, crying, and getting punched in the face by Jack Osborne. So I was like, sold. I That sounds really fun. Um, and then after that episode, I went to watch the episode before because I saw that Brian Austin Green was on it and I was like, sold. Um, and then I see that Tara Reid and Black China, And so I think I might watch the show. There were parts that were boring. I'll be honest with you guys. Uh, <laughs> Because it's, you know, basically the premise of the show is you get these reality TV stars that have something to prove, you know, from their cushy lives or their their scandal. Um, they come on and they um, perform. I mean, for lack of a better word, uh, they are recruits in the special forces and they have to go through the same thing that the special forces are. So the show says a selection for the special forces is a test unlike any other. Celebrities from all genres take on and try to survive demanding training exercises led by directing staff agents and elite team of ex special forces operatives in this unique series. The only way these recruits leave is to give up on their own accord through failure or potential injury or by force from the agents. Viewers see the recruits face the harshest of environments that simulate the highly classified selection process, pushing themselves in the ultimate test of their physical, mental, and emotional resilience and revealing the celebrity's deepest, truest character. And Tom Sandoval has survived for four episodes now, I believe. So mazel, Tom. But um, the special agents, the staff, they notice that Tom Sandy Bud has a lack of control. So um, we will see. We will see. We will see. Uh, um, we're like, we know. We definitely know. Bunny, hello. Good day. Watching from London. Finally caught alive. Well, hello, Bunny Chic. Welcome, 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 welcome to everybody. Letty says, me clicking this title with a deep sigh. Well, good luck. Hopefully you enjoy it. Uh, <laughs> hit that like if you guys haven't already. Let's try to see if we can hit 500 likes. Moderators in the chat, if you could keep me updated, that would be fantastic. If you want to support the channel further than liking or subscribing, you can always send a super chat while we're live. I'll highlight your comment. You can also hit me up on Venmo, Cash App, PayPal, join my Patreon or YouTube membership. Shout out to all of you who already do. Um, like Witness in the chat. Tom's like 80 years old by now. Yes. 
it's crazy. So I watched the latest episode of Special Forces on Fox. And like I said, I did have to fast forward a little bit um, through some of the challenges, but there was a boxing scene and Tom Sandoval has to go head to head boxing first with Nick Valal. And the only thing I know about Nick Valal is I think he comes from the bachelor world and he has a podcast where during Scandoval, he was interviewing a lot of the, you know, Vanderpump people or people in the Vanderpump circle, their friends and stuff. So I thought that was interesting. And I'm like, oh, maybe now I know why Nick Bilal was so interested in this um, because he fought Tom Sandoval in a boxing match. They had them fight each other and Nick lost. They decided that Nick had lost. He was taken like hail mayor. What are those haymakers? I don't know what they're called. Would you just like go like this? Like he didn't. Nick didn't have a lot. I mean, neither of them are boxers, but uh, he was just kind of, it was like a bad girls club fight sort of. And uh, he lost. So I thought, oh, maybe that made him extra salty towards Tom Sandy. But, but then Tom Sandy, but had to go up after or go up against Jack Osborne. And I didn't know that Jack Osborne was a jujitsu uh, person. And so Tom Sandoval was feeling himself in the beginning because he's like, yeah, I just beat Nick Bilal or whatever his name is. I mean, just beat the bachelor dude. And then uh, the agents, the whatever the guys are called, my apologies to them, but they they call themselves the staff. I think they said, all right, stop. And Tom Sandoval didn't stop. He kept hitting Nick and the uh, the guys running the show, the um, special forces dudes, they were like, oh, it looks like he has a lack of control. And we're like, yeah, yeah. 10 seasons of Vanderpump Rules coming up on 11 will tell us that, yeah, they definitely, he definitely does have a um, lack of control. So then he has to fight Jack Osborne. All right. And Jack has a jujitsu background and Jack works him. He twerks him. He twiggity twerks him. And he makes Tom's nose bleed. He hits him in the nose, the face, the eyes. They have like protective masks on, like those soft kind of helmets. But Tom gets beat up by Jack Osborne, who's at least four feet shorter than him. So size doesn't really match up. But Tom, no. So then Tom's ego took a big hit. And I think the special forces guy knew that it would. So if you've ever wanted to see Tom Sandoval get beat up, let's just say, you know, you're a sick individual like that. Um, you can check it out on special forces. Mm -hmm. He gets beat up by Jack Osborne. So there you go. Yeah. A little lack of control, a little lack of control. I says, hello, Chevy. Hello, hello, hello. So, um, Tom will want to, yeah, he'll want a celebrity boxing match. What I liked about this show is the special forces guys, the staff, they really had Tom Sandy Butt's number and they told him, you know, cause Tom Sandoval, then they go back to their barracks and he is in his own world. And everyone's like, Tom, you okay? You okay, Tom? And then Tom goes straight to the bathroom, which is like an outdoor bathroom. And they, he has like a wooden stall, but you can kind of see the top of his head and he starts crying. And then one of the guys comes out to comfort him. And he's like, thanks, man. It means a lot. I'm like crying and laughing and trying to poop at the same time. Well, he said trying to shit. And I was like, oh, this is a, it's a great show. So Tom was, you know, just stripped of all his luxuries of cheating with Rachel Raquel and getting drunk at one of the bars he has 0.025% ownership of and is now pooping and crying on the special forces show. But the special forces agents then called him in to have a little talk with him. And they said that, hey, man, you have to. Well, they didn't say, hey, man. They're like, what's going on? And Todd's like, I don't know, man. It's just really hard, man. This guy cannot have an adult 50-year-old conversation. He really cannot. He talks like a child. He's like, I don't know, man. I was. And they're like, well, what happened? I was in a cheating. I cheated. Uh, the girl was on my cast, and my publicist said I had never seen they had never seen anything like it before. Yeah, I mean, a real I'm a freaking reality star, and I cheated, man. God, man, he sounds like the Big Lebowski, but not as intelligent, you know. So he's like, come on, man. And my publicist was like, wow, I've never seen anything like that before. Then they sold merch, Team Ariana merch, and they sold in like a week. They sold two hundred thousand dollars of merch, man. 
God, it was so hard. I said, Team Ariana, people I was friends with for like 10 years turned on me. And these are special forces men. <laughs> They're just like, I mean, to have such problems, to have such problems as they're teaching you to that every decision you make, you have to own it. People's lives are at stake, not just your publicist, Tom. Yes, Donna, he brought up his publicist. <laughs> Thank you, Jack Osborne, for your service. We do appreciate it. We do not condone violence except for when we condone violence. So thank you. Yes. And then he was like, and it was on CNN, man. My cheating scandal was on CNN, man, man, man. <laughs> and these poor armed forces guys are just like, they're like, you're not a victim. They told him straight up. They basically told him exactly what Ariana told him in the reunion. And they were like, nothing happened to you. You did it. You're not a victim. Nothing happened. You did it. And he was like, yeah, man, but it was on CNN, man. And they're like, you have to own it. You have to, Lisa Rinna, own it. That's not what the special forces guys said exactly, but they were definitely like, you should take accountability and it's pathetic when you try to play the victim because you're not the victim, you did it. And that is what they told him. And he was like, okay. And then he just proceeded to then be the victim. And they told him, don't you want to change? You know, we want you here so that you do own your behavior and you see that you're not the victim in this and you quit acting like a victim because it's pathetic. And you come out a better person. He's like, yeah, man, I want that. I want that. But then he just uh, proceeded to play the victim. So there we have it. That is where he's at with this show. So despite lasting four episodes with a French braid on the top of his hair and having Jack Osborne beat the shit out of him, he still doesn't get it. And he still, the headlines are now showing um, Tom Sandoval still doesn't understand why the affair was such a big deal. He thinks it was just like every other affair. Tom, it wasn't. And the fact that you don't get it speaks volumes. I mean, um, E! News is running a story today that says, you know, Vanderpump rules Tom Sandoval still doesn't understand why his affair was such a big deal. Seven months after his affair rocked the world, Vanderpump rules star Tom Sandoval admitted he doesn't get why his cheating on his partner of nine years, Ariana Maddox, captured national attention. Tom Sandoval is still surprised, get it, S-U-R, surprised, how much public attention his months-long affair with co-star Rachel Raquel Levis got. The Vanderpump Rules star admitted he didn't realize the cheating scandal, which ended his nine-year romance with Ariana Maddox in March, would have a ripple effect beyond the Bravoverse. It was a pretty juicy effing scandal. Scandal told his fellow celebrity competitors, of the controversy in a sneak peek at the October 16th episode of Special Forces, World's Toughest Test, adding, if you would have opened up Instagram, you would have seen, man, you've seen me and Ariana every day. Uh, the 41, a.k.a. 67-year-old, noted that after Scandal blew up, he received a lot of messages from critics that were paragraphs of just, like, vicious, so visceral, like, hatred. This is what he told them in the barracks when... Um, the woman who was the first uh, black woman to ever get a uh, Olympic gold in the winter Olympics, I believe um, she's a speed skater. Uh, when Aaron Jackson is her name, um, when she was asking him, she was like, Oh, what? I don't know who you are. Cause he was playing it off. Like everyone knew who I was. It was all over the place. And Aaron's like, I don't, I don't know you. I was too busy winning, going to the Olympics and having discipline. So I don't know what that, is like and he was like it was pretty effing juicy scandal okay if you would have opened up instagram aaron oh my god you would have seen me and ariana every day oh and i got a lot of messages from critics man that were like paragraphs of just like vicious so visceral like hatred <sighs> calm down bro calm down bro i get that and i didn't even cheat on anybody you know what i mean like uh... so um sandoval revealed he is still stumped by the whole ordeal. I honestly don't know, man. The Tom Tom co-owner, that's a stretch, noted, I'm an effing stupid reality star. Like, come on, man. But the special forces guy clocked it. And they said, this guy loves attention. So anything that's going to bring attention to him, he's going to do. So you're not just this stupid reality star in your head. You're trying to say that. But we know you don't believe that, Tommy. Then Tom, showing us that he is just completely not in reality at all, or the reality of reality television, or how he's seen. Um, he said, before this whole scandal, 
this is what Tom Sandoval is saying. I would meet people who had probably seen me on Vanderpump Rules and they'd be like, oh my gosh, he's so cool. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> and then now people think I'm a complete narcissist, creeper vibes. I'm definitely not here to run away. I want to punish myself, man. I think I deserve it. Um, okay. Huh. Yeah. Meanwhile, Ariana is over on um, Dancing with the Stars, killing it, saying my life has been a roller coaster this past year. She said everybody got to watch it play out and my life blow up on television. The Bravo star went on to note that uh, Scandival does not define her. Ariana said, I just want to do something that is for me positive or for me and positive. And she's 38 who uh, she since moved on with fitness coach Danielle Y or way um, following the March breakup continued. It's time for me to stand on my own two feet, feeling like you were a joke to your partner of nine years is devastating, but I want to show other women that you don't have to let that hold you back. So much different than um, what Tom is saying. All right, so let's get into this. Um, oh, wrong episode. Let's get into this episode of uh, Tom Sandoval. Everybody loves Tom. You guys know you love Tom. Don't even try to lie. You all are here because you just love Tom so much. In Tom's eyes, it's all love, brah. It's all love. And we are going to roast and recap this episode. We're going to listen to it. I have not listened to this episode yet, so this will be my first time reacting to it. Feel free to sound off in the chat. Okay, let's get going. Here we go. Do to do to do. Let me know if you can't hear it, um, but it should be working audio wise. Let's uh, let's also speed it up because we know that he's like, come on, man, we'll speed up to 1.5. Let's put a little bit of music underneath it so we completely abide by changing it, you know, by fair use and all of that jazz. So Tom Sandoval can't come and have a petty party. Um, everybody knows where to listen to this. Okay. Just do into space, or should we do a little lo fi? Maybe we should do a little lo fi. A little lo fi is good. We'll take it down to 11. We're going to turn this. Um, this is, again, Tom Sandoval. You can go to his channel here where this video, world famous Tom Sandoval, has 9.9 thousand views. That's not good, Tom. We got to work on that. So you're welcome for the free promotion. All right, here we go. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Everybody Loves Tom. I'm here with my friend and fellow castmate from Special Forces, Jack Osborne. Dude, Aisha. How you doing, man? Thanks doing for coming well. on. I'm glad everybody loves Tom. Everybody does, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's a rough scene out there for you these days, bro. Well, yeah, but it's safe in here. It is safe in here, which is nice. a safe... Okay. Um, I'm going to put it down to 1.3. It's a little fast. So Jack Osborne's already like, mm, yeah, everybody doesn't love you. And Tom's like, yeah. Everybody loves me, right? Ha <laughs> hey, ha. It's the safety tree, the trust nest. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to make a cocktail. So you said you really like you really like crushing Arnold Palmer's yep. and you like Celsius. Yep. So, you know, let's see what we He loves crushing Arnold Palmer's and Celsius. I like both of those things too, Jack Osborne. When did Jack Osborne gets tats and when did he become mildly attractive? What happened? Not that he was ugly or anything, but he was just like a kid. He was just like Jack Osborne. He was just this little buddy. You can do here. Okay. We've got some vintage glassware. Ooh, I like yeah. this. Yeah. 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 I just wish I was. I wish I was this creative when it came to like making myself. Jack Osborne is like amazingly more attractive than Tom Sandoval, and I guarantee Tom Sandoval thinks he's the most attractive. But am I just? I don't know what's going on. But he seems. I don't know. Maybe it's because Tom Sandoval is not. I don't know. But again, whatever. Uh, Cocktails. A, a beverage. Yeah. Well, you know, you can like tutorial a lot of things. Yeah. On YouTube. It's uh, it's funny. I mean, I I always I'm just like a keen observer. You know, I stopped drinking a billion. Right? He got, like, fit. He got fit. He did. Oh, my gosh. Jack all grown up. I just, okay. All right. All right. Right. It is painful without me. I agree. Thank you so much, Nomadic. And, yeah, God, that shirt. That shirt is. In fucking years ago. But I just think it's, you know. Yeah, how long has it been? It's been 20 years. 20 years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's been, like, uh. 20 hours? <laughs> yeah. No, it's been, it's been a little over uh, five months for me. Oh, dude. Oh, yeah. congrats. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, stop. Wait, so Jack is saying he's been sober for 20 years. And Tom, I mean, are we are we really still buying into Tom as 
pushing this sobriety kick. And as a sober lady myself, if this isn't true, Tom, it's a real shitty thing to do. Oh, well, you know, I stopped. Congrats, Jack. Drinking a billion yeah. fucking years. Ago. Call them Jacks. Congrats, Jack. To go, but I just think it's, you know, yeah, how long has it been? It's been twenty years. Twenty years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's been like. Uh... 20 hours? Yeah, no, it's been... <laughs> Even Jack doesn't believe he's like, 20 hours? Okay, poo poo head. It's been a little over uh, five months for me. Oh, dude. Yeah. Oh, congrats. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, stop drinking and uh, smoking cigarettes. When the... mm -hmm. this whole situation happened, I kind of, I found myself just like drinking nonstop and chain smoking. I think you already always did that, but cool. Yeah. You know, I guess <laughs> when, the, when the world kind of hates you, it's like, what else are you going to do? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, Jack Osborne seems pretty charming and endearing. So far, my favorite, we're only, I could change, a minute 27 into this, but so far, he's my favorite um, guest he's ever had. The other guests were like. Yeah, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, I was curious. This is actually a two-part question. Um, what, what was your, like, situation specifically that got you to so Just ask him, why'd you decide to be sober? What was your like situation like that got you like oh Tom over up and mm. then the second part is do you want to take a shot and do a bump of coke before you explain that okay also like very shitty in poor taste I'm a comedian and to go to someone who's been sober for twenty years and be like also do you want to take a bump of coke and do a shot like f yourself with that stupid lame joke this guy is just last uh, live it was a roofie joke a date rape joke and now. We're talking to someone who's been sober and comes from a family uh, with his dad being Ozzy Osbourne, a family of addiction and things to say that is like, Tom, you're just you're just so toned off. You're so boring. It is so lame. Only I'll only do a bump of Coke if it's off your nipple. OK, um, which no. one? My first, second or third? Uh, you're a fourth. My fourth. Uh, All right. <laughs> no, I uh, so I stopped. I stopped drinking because I, you know, I, I was getting pretty bad you know with with drugs and alcohol combined yeah. read the band um, you know it was time. 2003 yeah. it was like the height of like the oxycontin wave oh my so God. i, I kind of fell into that i'm dude i'm so really, i'm like so lucky i didn't like break an arm or like get my wisdom tom let your guests speak stop trying to be funny stop trying to be that you're not that guy you're not that guy you're not that guy and right now nobody likes you so the best thing to do is allow the guests to be so likable that we forget you're there that's your job, Tom. Letty says Jack Osborne is my favorite guest because he's the only guest that has beat Tom up. I mean, <laughs> yeah. And I'm just going to say, Amanda, Jason isn't there. And I think I have a, I think it's because of us. It's because of me. It's because of all of us here. Because we were like, why is that man sitting randomly in those ill fitting clothes holding a laptop over his tits that he never looks at? What is happening? Why is there no table? Notice how now they're standing. There's a bar. Jason's gone. I think I made a plea to Jason's wife and I said, come get this man. Come pick him up in the minivan, get the Dodge Caravan, roll up and take him home. He needs to be put down for a nappy nap. He is just ruining it. So sorry, Jason, I ruined your podcast career. Allegedly. Wave. Oh my so God. I, I kind of fell into that. I'm dude, I'm so real. I'm like so lucky I didn't like break an arm or like get my wisdom to you old or anything <laughs> to where they, they were like, like here you go throw yeah. oxycotton at you yeah fucking heroin yeah it was insane I mean, oh. <laughs> sober tom wow okay heroin oh yeah totally so just bringing up hair this guy loves bringing up heroin what is his obsession with talking about heroin every damn live or every comparison him and tom schwartz make he's like it's like my heroin man yeah but it's uh you know it's but it's it ain't much better these days out there though with all fentanyl out there and shit like yeah. I, was, I was talking to a buddy who i've been in recovery with for a very long time and he was telling me he knows eight guys this year alone that have died i know it's, i it's, know a few people you know um it's like people that literally do like it's like he's just waiting to say and i know somebody listen to jack react naturally to him maybe go wow eight people you know he it didn't even pause for effect nothing it was just i know uh like you know Do you like cocaine maybe like on like cocaine like i know so i know stuff too tom take a breath this is wow you have actually a good guest who is being endearing vulnerable sharing and you're just shitting out the mouth halloween or and new year's and like that's it yeah like a couple bumps or whatever and they're literally just dead yeah it's it's a fucking so tom sandoval just shared with us you know 
Jack Osborne's talking about the fentanyl epidemic and losing, you know, eight people that have lost their lives to this. And Tom said, yeah, I, I know people that just do a bump on New Year's, Halloween, Easter, St. Patrick's Day, Labor Day, Arbor Day, Memorial Day, and then they they, they died. Yeah, I know it. Uh huh. Scary time out there now. It's, like, what a, it's definitely a good time to be sober. Yeah, yeah, man. I've like. He does not believe that Tom is sober. There's no, as a fellow sober, per, I'm sorry, it's not reading, but okay, cool. I feel like he's doing it as a way to get attention, sympathy. It's very disingenuous. I literally told people, I'm like, dude, do not do any like random, no. like, you know, because that's always, that's like a thing. Like people are like, oh, you go in the bathroom, like, oh, you want to bump, you want to bump, you know, but. uh, I don't know. That's not, I don't. Well, then again, I don't really go to the same spots as Tom Sandoval when I'm at the local Applebee's that. People aren't really asking me if I want to bump. Now, when I was in West Hollywood, a couple people, a couple times I was offered cocaine. I don't want to brag. But um, I'm, when he's like, people are like, that's you, Tom. It's you looking at yourself in the mirror going, want a bump? Want a bump, Tom? Tom, would you like a bump? Yes, Tom. I would like a bump. Allegedly. Everything is for entertainment purposes only. Everything I say is true, except for the parts that are false. And everything is alleged. Yeah, no, fuck that. Those days are over. Yeah, they're long gone. All right. right. So what we oh, we're gonna add a little little zest to it. Yeah, we're gonna top it with a little bit of a uh, lemon lime sparkling Celsius. There you go. I like this. A little mint here. Oh, good vibe, dude. Dude, cheers. Cheers. Thank you for the. Uh, let's, yeah. Let's give this a whirl. Let's see how it is. I call it the right now. The working title is the uh, the jumping jack. Okay. That's not a good title. That's actually pretty good. That's bad, huh? Yeah, that's not bad at all. All right, and we're back. And oh God, Jason! Oh, and his shirt's unbuttoned too low, too low! Oh my God, do you guys see this, Jason? I was hoping your wife had come to save you. Oh no! <laughs> Look at this guy, you guys! No! Now he was like, "I'm gonna let my tits out." We already—he already was using the laptop to hide his tits, and now he is letting his tits out. Oh, Jason! Good God, please stop. Oh God, why does he have to be there? What is he wearing? Oh, here we go. And we are uh, chilling here, having some- uh, Mocktails. Some mocktails. Yes. Cheers, Clinky. Cheers. 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 Jason, what are you Cheers. drinking? Oh God, poor Jack. Look, at he's in between these two. Oh, it's the worst sandwich ever. I'm drinking some- Some good loving? Tom's good loving. It's my uh, rye whiskey. Oh, rye whiskey. look at you. Way to support the sobriety, Jason. Way to be a good friend, asshole. Yeah. Um, anyhow, I'm sure. At, at what point are you gonna a, are you gonna implement an embargo against discussing it? Um, I think what you should do is just an idea. You should basically do a thing where, like, be like, all right, <laughs> anyone can talk about this with me until January first, 2024, and then I'm fucking done talking about it. That yeah. gives you to the rest of the year. You could write it out. Anyone, you could do like an AMA every day. Ask me any question online. Ask me anything. Get it all out. And then you're like, and we're done. Huh. Because I think you're more layered than, than that. Oh, well, I appreciate that. All right. What is Jack asking him to do? I am distracted by Jason coming back. Anyone can talk about this with me until January 1st, 2024. And then I'm fucking done talking about it. That yeah. gives you to the rest of the year. You could write it out. Anyone, you could do like an AMA every day. Ask okay. me any question online. Ask me anything. That's not a horrible idea. I mean, yeah, ask him anything. Now, the problem is, Jack Osborne, you're assuming that he is someone who is, you know, self-reflective and has a little bit of self-deprecation and wants to be better, but he doesn't. He just says, get it a lot. And they're like, and we're done. Huh. Because I think you're more layered than, than that. Oh, well, I appreciate that. I, I think I am as well. He's like, mm, no. But exactly what Nomadic is saying. He will never stop talking about it since it's all he has to say <laughs> to stay relevant. It really is. Vanderpump Rules was going down the shitter, unfortunately. It really was. It, the last couple seasons weren't good. And then Scandival came and revived it with a little bit of controversy. Um, ugh. Oh, um, no, but no, no. I don't know. It's like, it's really tough with, you know, with the show that I'm on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that seems to be like the things that we talk about often. Yeah. Um, you know, just with, you know, having other people do things on the show. Like, it, it like, gets brought well, up, like, the Jackson Kristen thing. Like, you know, it's but, like comments and everything. Don't, didn't some of your other colleagues and co-workers do the same fucking thing? Uh, yeah. Okay, so. It's different, though, because it's me. Okay, well, I don't want to talk about that. Jack Osborne, don't fall down that. Don't fall down that trap. It wasn't exactly the same. J look at Jason. Jason, this is, Jason, this is, Jason's wife. I need you right now. What's, you let Tom roll his sleeves. You let Tom show his man cleave. Look at this man. Jason, stop. Put that fucking laptop down. You're not doing anything with it, Jason. Jason, stop it. We know you have a MacBook. We're all very proud of you. But come on, Jason. Come on. Ash. No, of course. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. 
if you could go back and do things differently, what would be like the three things that you would you would have done differently? Um, so I think I would have maybe worried a little less about it. Be, I thought I would have worried a lot less about trying to do it like right mm -hmm. and just doing it like just doing what? Having sex with Rachel Raquel, cheating on Ariana, or breaking up with her? Taking the steps to you know end the relationship that I knew. Taking the steps to end the relationship. See how he's like it. It's his body language and everything speaks volumes because he's so tight mouthed about it. Bring the relationship or that could be the cocaine allegedly we don't know i don't know he was talking about cocaine not me it wasn't working would you have ended the relationship before engaging with raquel yeah i wasn't in the in the frame of mind that i am now mm. but also too you know throughout this whole situation i've made a lot of like positive changes in my life and ah. it's been a big wake-up call for me in general what? um so if it was, you wouldn't be wearing that outfit. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. And, and some you wouldn't be making jokes to sober people about cocaine and interrupting them. Ways like, obviously I wouldn't want to hurt people the way that I did, or, or more so Ariana. But, you know, I as far as the things happening the way that they did, like, I, I have to just kind of try to be grateful in a sense that they did. So I, because otherwise I wouldn't be where I am right now. Yeah. You know, yeah. I would have been doing the same shit. Yeah, I think you were I, okay with like kind of being stuck where you were there. You're like, well, this is going to be my life. Yeah. I'm not super happy, like... In this relationship what where we probably both aren't super happy, but like- What are you doing, Jason? You guys, I'm sorry. I don't mean to yell. I actually, I do. What is this necklace? Why does he have two nipples on his necklace? What is happening here? We got to make it big. Jason, stop this. Look at, even your face wants to leave your body. It's just, no, no. It's giving, come and knock on our door. It's giving Larry going down to the, remember the threes company and he's going down to the Regal Beagle. I mean, is this dude going to the Regal Beagle? What is this outfit? What is this shirt? What is happening? Why did you let Tom Sandoval throw up all over you? Oh my God. This podcast is hurting people, Tom. Yes, Lexi. Jesus Christ. Do you see this? Jason's wife. Are you done with him? I, I'm so sorry that he's doing this to you. I, prayers to Jason's wife. <laughs> because if Chell left the house like this and it wasn't gosh darn Halloween, it'd be over. Over. God damn it, Jason. Quit doing your life so dirty. It, that's what happens. Look at his face. Stop it, Jason. I'm so tired of this man. When you're, I guess, my age and... Well, yeah, it, and, right? it's, and it, listen, it's like I've been, I've been in a... I was in a marriage that was really not the best and it wasn't the healthiest and there was a lot of lot of things and I didn't make the best choices when it came to ending it so I'm not you know I can't you, you know I every it's it's easy to kind of sit there and mm -hmm. go well you should have done this you should have done that but it is it's hard man it's, it's hard. hard you're it's, emotionally involved yeah and it, but you but not only that when you are no. is in, you know when you are you are all but married you guys mm -hmm. own property together you're assuming you guys were business partners to a degree your yeah. co-workers you're it's that's a hard it's a hard thing but I think it's I think the you know if I'm just sitting back and being, you know, observing on, you know, just commenting on what I observed. I think the, 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 the one thing where, you know, I would suggest it, you know, just to, if, if you were my buddy going through it and like, and I knew you, I'd have been like, dude, the best thing you can do is just take radical ownership of it. Yeah. You know? Well, Jason didn't tell him that already. Jack Osborne has proved that he is a far more evolved man, but I expected that of him because he came up, you know, he came in looking like a boss, been sober for 20 years, the kind of like knowledge and insight and self uh work he's done on himself is unlike anything tom could ever understand so already i wish jack osborne was friends with this man but men like tom sandoval don't become friends with people like jack osborne or and they don't listen to them um they become friends with people like jason old nipple necklace unbuttoned down to the belly button guy so but yes Yes, I love that he what he just said. Let's hear it one more time, Tom. Are you listening, Tom? Suggest it, you know, just if, if you were my buddy going through it, and like, and I knew you, I'd have been like, dude, the best thing you can do is just take radical ownership of it. Radical ownership. Do you see that? And Tom's like, I don't know what those words mean. I own this shirt and I own half of my house. Well, less than half because I took money out and I owe my mom a quarter of a mil. But is that what you mean, Jack? Yeah. You know, it's like when I yeah. I don't know what you're saying. I my, I walked in and my, my chick was watching the the rat whatever like the, yeah. the come to Jesus you know shit talk fest. Oh god! And the I, yeah, the reunion. And I was just like, you just have to own it. Like, and, and that's the thing. It's like when 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 men get caught, you know, cheating or what. You hear that, Tom? Jack talked to Lisa Rinna before this. You got to own it. In whatever kind of scenario, radical ownership. <laughs> Not she and Letty, but yeah, he is looking. Yeah, Jason is now team ride with me. I think Jason probably has a Corey 
similar habits to Corey and might eat his little bugs. Okay. Oh my God. Yeah. So are people like Jack see right through Tom's bullshit. Mm -hmm. is is the only is the, actually the correct thing to do you're right it's it's better to just take like the yeah. radical ownership and just be like yeah fucked up like i no that's not what he said yeah fucked up because even the way you say it is so cavalier yeah fucked up big deal i cheated okay get over it shouldn't have done this and i did it i should have done this i did it no you say i did this it was horrible you don't say yeah yeah whatever I did it, shouldn't I? Um, because there's no making it right. Like, and that's the thing. That's why you just have to. Even when Tom is like doing this exercise with Jack, trying to repeat it and be sincere, the insincerity is just, it just drains from his point. You're like, I can't, you can say, I'm sorry to you blue in the face. You can disclose everything that happened to your partner, but it's never going to fix it. So I the only I, thing you can do is just be like, I had a lot of pent up resentment too. I said at one point, I was like, you know, the, my, the last. Yes, your resentment is coming out. We know you're resentful. You resent everybody who's holding you accountable. You resent Ariana for existing. You resent the fact that this information came out in the first place. We know you're resentful. This eight months is going to erase the last eight years, you know? <laughs> no, the last eight years was a lie. You've always been like this. That's what we're learning, dum dum. I mean, we spoke about it at length when we were filming, but like, it's, uh, it's, I think you've, you, that chaos. No matter what you did, no matter you could have fucking murdered someone, whatever. It's like having that amount of social kind of pressure. All, all of you, you know, your your ex, Raquel, whatever. Like that's a lot of a lot of squeeze. You it was know? crazy. And and to to have to you know withstand that, especially Jack, it was crazy. Do you know that his publicist had never seen anything like it? His publicist. In this day and age, it's a, it's a difficult thing. Granted, you brought it on yourself. Well, in in the trailer for uh, Special Forces, you say you want to get punished. Do you think he got punished? Jason, be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> You're still laughing at your own jokes like that, Jason. It's awkward. It's awkward. You just asked him a question. <laughs> in the in the trailer for Special Forces, he said he won't get punished. You think he got punished? <laughs> we all got fucking tell. Yeah, we got the punished. We all got punished. Jason, I just saw your cleavage move. I know everybody about that. Yeah. Jason's tits were bouncing. Jason, button up your shirt. But button up your shirt, slut. I mean, if women are gonna get slut shame for it, I'm gonna slut shame the men. You look like a whore. Don't look so hoary. Maybe if you wouldn't address like that, Jay said, we wouldn't talk to you like this. You're kind of asking for it, Jay said. <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, Special Forces was a way more of an ass kicking than I thought it was going to be. So for those of us who haven't watched season one. I wish I didn't watch this. Mm -hmm. What is the gist of the game? What is the gist of the game? Is it about man tits? What, what, what is the... It's basically... It, is there food? It's a show where you are... Um, it, it's, I just read the description and I guarantee this, he's going to get it wrong. It, you could, it goes in the category of a competition reality show mm -hmm. or competition show, but you're not competing really against anybody. Very rarely. And you kind of compete against yourself to see if you can last. Even if you are, it's not really that like a competition. Like we had team, we had team events where we're like racing each other or doing whatever. It's a competition within yourself. It's like a marathon. But for the most part, you're competing against yourself. There's. It took us that long to get there, Tom. Thing, what you can do, like, do you have what it takes? to be in special forces. Or you dropped off somewhere? Sort of. Off. Jason, did you not watch your friend's show? This is embarrassing. He didn't watch his friend's show. Are you dropped, what happens? I'm sorry, I was the guy offering him coke in the bathroom, allegedly. So I know it's like you you, you have a camp, but it does mm. start where you kind of dropped off remote. And you guys were in New Zealand? Yeah, we, were in, we filmed this in New Zealand. Whoa. In Queenstown. Queenstown. And it was the winter, it was summer for us here in LA, but winter for you guys there. Yeah, winter yeah. started like two days before so we started it was filming. Freezing. It was very cold. Oh it wasn't God. crazy cold. It was funny, because I, Jason, Oh my God. Oh my God. Wow. It was really chilly, huh? Tom hates chilly. I thought we were going to maybe like Auckland. Yeah. So I started like getting a little bit lighter weight stuff. And then uh, <laughs> like I realized it was dogs. Queenstown <laughs> and, you know, started like had to like regroup. Yeah. And a lot of people's luggage got stuck. Mm -hmm. Mine did. Yeah. It and was, it was, there was a lot. Fucking dude, when you're not doing anything, that's the most stressful part. Cause yeah. you're like, what the fuck is coming on it? You just complain about his luggage getting stuck? Weight stuff. And then uh, <laughs> yeah, I realized it was dogs. Queenstown. <laughs> and you know Jason you don't have to laugh at everything Tom says okay you've already proven to be his ultimate little fanboy I, like had to like regroup yeah and a lot of people's luggage got stuck mm -hmm. mine did <gasps> oh no you guys put your hearts in the chat for Tom Sandoval his luggage got stuck oh my god no one has ever faced such atrocities as Tom Sandy butt we'll have to put on the cinematic music turn it up a little bit poor Tom no one has ever had to go through what Tom Sandy but has had to go through. He lost his luggage. Yeah, it was, it was, there was a lot. Fucking dude, when you're not doing anything, that's the most stressful. This editing is shit. 
what was Jack about to say? And then you just start going on about not doing anything. It's full park, because yeah. you're like, what the fuck is coming? On edge the on entire edge. time. On edge. But they're filming you being on edge, or yeah. you're just yeah. waiting for something. You're just happening. waiting. Jason, what are these questions? Of course, they're fil it's a reality show, Jason. They're filming you. They want to get all your reactions to the special forces and trying to be part of it. What is what is what is he saying? Like right, like we could be right now if we were filming. Like these cameras wouldn't be here. But they would just have remote cameras. Right. The the only person you can communicate to on the entire thing is the is the DS, which is the directing staff. Whoa. And they are fucking mean. Wow. And they you you could be like, hey, what time? They're like, none of your fucking business. And you're Whoa. like, you have to go. To, you have to tell no the uh, the head. What? what is it? The um the uh, staff. Staff. Yeah. Well, the directing staff, which was Rudy. Rudy was the, the head, I guess. No, you. Are, I'm talking about like with us. Yeah. We have a what? Was Tom there? You know what? Uh, oh God. Uh, uh, what is it called? Oh, what the, called? Um, uh, uh, Chief Duty recruit. recruit. Duty recruit. Duty, Duty recruit. Duty recruit. Is the head of of all the recruits. So mm -hmm. you tell, like, let's say Jack's the duty recruit. Everybody's like, oh, okay, I lost my watch. I need my canteen's gone. Um, I need like band aids. They tell Jack that he makes a list and he goes over and he has to stand by this rock and go like staff and like yell and then they come out of like open the door and come out of this thing and then, and then basically he tell he asks somebody you know tells them what they need and it's like a yes no to this yes to this whoa yeah <laughs> it was it was <laughs> so boring this podcast sucks I'm sorry um all offense no offense all offense but it it kind of sucks um but Jay's go whoa thing and then and then basically he tell he asks somebody you know. Tells them what they need, and it's like a yes, no to this, yes to this. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Is this like, he says like this baby face with his tits hanging out and his sleeves rolled up with this just like manic <laughs> button up shirt off? Whoa. With a chin beard and a neck beard? I can't. I cannot take you men seriously with this. This is ridiculous. Yeah. It was it was full Whoa. on. It was a real uh, you know. And I've done a bunch of adventure races. I've done yeah. You've done. You've, you said you've worked with the uh, Navy SEALs, right? Yeah, yeah. Like my my old roommate, he was in special operations, and wow. I've, a ton of my friends are in that community, and wow. I've done Our all sorts of different adventure races. So it was like Hollywood. I was like, how hard can this really be? What I wasn't prepared for was the duration of like the me the mental component of of how long it was mm -hmm. and how little information you're given. Therefore, you're constantly on edge. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa! Wow, Jason, you're really uh, giving a lot to the show there. Whoa, just you're just all tits and woes, huh? And like when they it's say it's like the mental, full on mental. You're like it's, so you said it was like mental, so it's it's like mental. Whoa! I don't want to go take a shit right now because you gotta. This man is always talking about his shits. Run around the parade ground and go over to the, where the, the the fucking Johnny on the spots are, whatever they are, the outhouses are, and you're like, I don't want to. I'm I've been caught with my pants down, like literally. <laughs> Look at Jack's like, uh oh, we're doing puns? What's happening? Yeah. Um you could you could literally be like, I'm gonna go take a I'm gonna go take a shit right now. You're sat on the toilet, they'll come out and they'll be like, Do you recruit? Have, you have ten seconds to be on the parade ground and you're like, He's like, Oh my god, while well, the doo doo's coming out? Oh dude, that's crazy. Look at the fuck. You don't wanna like you're like you? I am my socks are my shoes are wet. My, I have to go put my stuff, you have to put your your uh wet Tom's like, good thing I don't wipe. Because remember, everyone says he stinks. Allegedly, I didn't say that, but people did. Close into the dry room, which is like a super sauna. heated sauna, like sauna that's done by like a, a, a wood burning stove. And you're gonna like gotta go like spark, get that fire going. And then you're like, but if I'm changing shoes, like that, these boots take the boots take a second to like lace up. Mm -hmm. You know, you gotta like put. That is good insight. Boots take a second to lace up. It's a good observation, Tom. Socks on, lace them up, and then like mm -hmm. make sure your bag's packed up correctly and your bergen. Bergen. Yeah, you can't say bag. It's not a purse. Rock, a rock or a bergen is <laughs> yeah. what they call it. Bergen. Yeah. And be ready to go. And that's something I struggled with a lot. Being ready. <laughs> Jason's about to roast you, Sandy, but being ready. <laughs> I know what that's like. I have to carry all the equipment to the concert at a karaoke show. Yeah, remember that time I couldn't wake you up because you were sleeping late? And I was like, Tom's dead. <laughs> and I was like, just kidding. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Why, why is this man doing this? <sighs> now I got to slow that down and listen to it. Or rock, a rock or a bergen is yeah. what they call it. Yeah, and be ready to go. And that's something I struggled with a lot. Being was, ready. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Surprise, surprise. Because yeah, yeah. that whole saying was, you you don't get ready, you you stay ready. Warrior, well, stay warrior, ready. stay ready. Yeah. So like we had to, and I'll tell you who was amazing at making sure we were all buttoned up tight. Jojo. Jojo. Right. Yeah. Jojo Siwa Man, is, and I said this to her. Like, why do you think that is? I think Jojo is one of the most remarkable young women I've ever come across wow. because she is, you know, she grew up in such a structured, you know, tough environment dancing. Yeah. So at young age. Yeah. So when you step.
Jason, just let Jack talk. Just let Jack talk. Put on that stage, you are fucking buttoned up. Your your performance is tight. Like prepared. you are prepared. And so she she brought that into the camp, and it was like way to go, Jojo Siwa. We she made sure that every we matched completely. Wow. What buttons were were, were were done on our on our pants? And we made sure. decisions like right away. Yeah. Wow. Like no, like somebody's missing their their uh their hat, their beanie. So it's like no beanies. Everyone take that beanie off. Or Whoa. if they Whoa, everybody. Yeah, Jason. Everybody. Yeah. If somebody's somebody, missing a glove. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, we had Tom just afraid to do this himself. Is that why Jason's there? Is he just needs like a support buddy, a support animal? And she made sure we were in uniform the entire time. And she did not falter when it came down to morale. Yeah. 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 It was it was a great experience. And I and I and I if someone walked in that door right now was like, the bus is outside, you're going back, I'd be like, let's go. Wow. I'd do it. Yeah. In a fucking hoppy. It was such an amazing experience, and I That's wish bad. I could do it again. Let's say you cut up your hand not enough to where you can't go on, but they just say like just keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Figure it out later. Oh, yeah, you're well, bleeding. So, so Jason says, if, if, if they just cut up your hand, they just be like, keep going. Whoa. Such an amazing experience, and I That's wish wild. I could do it again. Let's say you cut up your hand. When... Let's say you cut up your hand. Great question, Barbara Walters, Jason. Not enough to where you. Not enough to where you're like, you're dying, or you, Tom Sandoval's oversleeping because he's sleeping off a, a hangover and some uh, <laughs> cocaña. But, uh, you know, so you're at the door, you know, and you're knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door, and it turns out he's just sleeping. Not enough to like do that. Can't go on, but they just they like just keep going. Yeah, yeah. Whoa. Figure it out. Like whoa, whoa, <laughs> whoa, Jason. Oh yeah, you're whoa. bleeding. Are you happy that it was in the cold versus the hot? Yeah, you... way. Yeah, I fucking I'm Anakin Skywalker. Oh. I fucking hate sand. <laughs> <laughs> I hate sand. Yeah, it was. Uh, I was definitely grateful for that. Yeah. It, it yeah. You can always layer up, I guess. Yeah, exactly. You can't take your skin off. Well, and yeah. that was the thing too. They, it's much easier. Man, I'm so glad Jason's a part of this podcast because he's like, hey, you can always layer up when it's cold, but you can't take your skin off. <laughs> because they don't want you to get any kind of frostbite or anything like that. They, mm. we had really warm. I was never cold outside of wet. Yeah. But even when I was wet, because everything was wool and wool socks and shit like that, I was still warm. Just wet. Was Hands warm. down, it, it has to be the hottest celebrity reality show. Oh yeah. oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, way harder than Vanderpump Rules. Way harder. It's, it's so fucking hard. Yeah. I mean, I had like my hands were all, but you know, like I said, like I kept. Do not. I, I didn't know this, but I guess his pedicure though and manicure stayed, allegedly. Because I get gels in your hand. He gets gel nails, you guys. The special forces were like, he was like, "Can I get a fill?" And they're like, "We don't do that here." And he was like, "This is." Ugh. Your, your finger doesn't know something stupid. Of course you do, Tom. <laughs> well, yeah. Of course you get gels. Yeah, of course I get gels. I mean, <laughs> roast his ass, Jack. Because otherwise, like, they're gonna, you know, making cocktails and stuff. Like, it's gonna, you know, they're gonna come off. And like, you told us you're commanding officer. I'm, I'm sure. Yes. You're explaining. You're like, I was like, I got gels. I have gels okay. here, uh, sir. Yes, so sir. when your nails grow, I let them grow out. I didn't get them removed. I didn't really have time, but also I was like, ah, whatever. It'll be like a thing, you know. Um, <laughs> oh, it was a thing. It was a fucking thing. <laughs> Immediately, he's but like, what's with your fucking nails? <laughs> but when your nails grow out, when you have gels, they're like, they like. They're more looped this way towards your cuticle than they are when you get out, than they flatten out when you get out. So like my nail was put. Oh my God, this is a podcast. We gotta fast forward a little bit. It's so boring. Oh, what's Jason have to say? Army barracks. Yeah. And that's why I imagine you like that going was, in. No, no, that was like, like, Borat and movie Borat. Yeah. Or nails. Yeah. They had like, it, he's gonna quote Borat. It hurts so fucking bad. It was like tender and like all red. It looked like it was starting to get infected. Have like, you ever seen Borat and movie Borat? Yeah. Not Borat. Um, Jason coming in with a 15 year old reference. Awesome. What's the other one? Uh, Bruno. Bruno. You remember when he goes? Oh, and Bruno. Just to like the, the army barracks. Yeah. And that's what I imagine you like that going was in. No, no, that was fucking <laughs> Jason, I could see more of your tits. Oh my God. If this was a lady, they'd be slut shaming you. You're so lucky you're a dude. In a <laughs> day, he's got JoJo. He's like, he has like a little like thing around his like a uh, Within a day, he's got JoJo braiding. <laughs> what the heck? His hair. Yeah. Fuck yeah. And he was like hanging out with the girls and like all this shit. Yeah. I'm like, this fucking guy. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was asking JoJo if she was down to hump, but she was like, I'm not into your time. That's how he gets though. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, okay. Jason, stop. Where where is Jason looking for approval? He's looking off to the what would be the left for him. Looking for approval. How, how to do? How to do? Who, who's out? Jason, is your wife there? I hope not. This is embarrassing. Fuck yeah. And he was like hanging out with the girls and like all this shit. Yeah. I'm like, this fucking guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's how he gets though. I yeah. Guess. I'm like, okay. That's how he gets all the girls. I'm going to try to figure it out. He told me to unbutton my shirt and put on this ridiculous necklace and leave a little bit of my chest hair and just cover the areolas. That's how it worked. Okay. 
I mean, uh, well, my hair is like a, you know, eyeball length. So I had one of it out of my face. Ah, and, well, yeah. in, the, in the promos, you do see it with like the, like almost like a mohawk of braids. Yeah, yeah. he does. He did. I feel like Jason is low key, high key in love with Tom. Look at the way he looks at him. Yeah, I saw that braid. It was like really pretty, Tom. It was, he looks really sexy. It works. Even, no, it looks, I, I called it the predator. Yeah, yeah. yeah predator without a like. mask on. <laughs> Dude, well, he's a predator, all right. <laughs> like, kept my head, like, yeah. Kept my hair from flopping around. Yeah, and then anywhere. him and JoJo would do like <laughs> mobility exercises and like stretch <laughs> yeah. yeah. JoJo Siwa, run, run. You're too talented. You're too young. Don't get mixed up with this guy, okay? Mm -mm, mm -mm. You don't need to save this man. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, it's a truly unique experience in TV. Wow. Like I've done, I've done so many TV shows, so many things similar, but it was like, it was like nothing I'd ever done. It was amazing. Wow. And, and I, I feel like the friendships and like, yeah. dude, I never thought I'd be in a fucking situation where it's like, Tom Sandoval, Bodie, Jojo, yeah. Aaron, like all these, you're like, and you're all living together. It, to the truest sense of the term, living together. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I wrestled in high school Whoa. and our coach ran us so hard, but. So Tom bringing this up again, he brought this up in the episode of Special Forces that he was a wrestler in high school and he would just wear the guys out. He would just wait and get, until they get tired and he would never stop because he's a machine. Just ask Rachel Raquel. It was great because we were in such good shape that even if we weren't as good as the other teams we, we went against, we beat them in the third round. We'd outlast them. Yeah. And <laughs> I missed that feeling of getting pushed like that, you know, like, um, and it was really, I was looking forward to like experiencing that again because you can't quite, you can't do it on your own. And even if you go to like some sort of a, you know, circuit training class. You can't push yourself, man. You can't like, you can't jack yourself off, man. You, you got to have a girl there. It's just. Yeah, it's not the same, even with the stranger or the where you put you sit on your hand till it goes to sleep. It's not the same, man. Uh, so it's just it's not the same yeah. as you having the duration. Kind of pressure. Yeah. So you've been doing the, the show. What is with these cuts? Like shh, everybody loves Tom. Next segment. Next poorly edited segment. Oh, I remember when the show came out. Um, I mean, everybody watched, you know, the Osbournes. It was, it was crazy. It was like everybody watched that show. It was like kind of one of the first of its kind, right? Yeah, it was the first kind of family reality show. Yeah. It was a big show. Yeah. And, and then like MTV heydays. <laughs> oh, man. That was when MTV was cool. Yeah. Oh my God. It was right. Like it yeah. was still, it was still TRL. There yep. was still video. Remember that when MTV was cool? It was like, cool. I remember that Jack. Yeah. Now there's like no videos on MTV. Not Tom, we know that. We know that boomer. But you so know what weird. You know happened? There was this like gratis license that MTV had. And it was some, like a, like a, a license to where they could play any song, any music, anything. It was like the, a deal artists and record companies did when MTV started. And it basically allowed them to just, here's all the music in the world, do with it what you want. You don't have to pay us a penny because we see you as a- Promotional marketing, yes, Jack. Explain it to us coming from a father who's a legendary uh, music artist. Marketing tool. Well, they stopped playing videos and they lost that license. Oh, so wow. now there's like this whole thing about- That's interesting, I didn't know that. So this is the most interesting thing to ever come out of Tom Sandoval's. Uh, show and he didn't even ask this question jack's just giving us this information them paying and them having to pay license fees to use music and whereas before they didn't like the all <laughs> had the best soundtrack ever on the show oh we could, yeah we could pull music from anything and everyone that's probably why the challenge always uses older music yeah there's never it's like all stuff from like 2003 and earlier yeah wow on the challenge how bad do you think tom wants to be on the challenge he wants to be on it so bad he's like, god i'll be awesome i could be ct johnny bananas wes all of them and shonda you're your comment is killing me. Nothing like an 80 year old remembering his high school days. Yes, I remember my grandpa. He remembered his high school days fondly. Yes, get the likes up, you guys. Hit that like. We're trying to hit 500 likes. We got to get more likes than Tom Sandoval. Let's see what he has. He has 397 likes. I think we can do it. Okay, we got to get more than 397 likes. All right, I'll even give him a like to help him out. 398 likes he has. Hit that like. It's like a lot of like hits from like that, but they, there's never like new stuff. Yeah, yeah. Wow, but that, so they, they probably did that though, because MTV probably was, they, they're like, well guys, like. All right, Tom, quit speculating on why you think MTV and Viacom and the whole <laughs> corporation did this business deal when you owe your mom a quarter of a million. We wanna hear from Jack, not you. He's like, well, they probably did it cause, well, here's what I think. Do you have a business degree? What's going on? Do you have any experience in this? No, you're just talking out of your ass. Our music's being used in reality shows, not on TRL. Well, it wasn't- As it, soundtracks. It was- they Jack's like, no, no, that's not what happened. They just stopped using music, period. And like, and well, that, and it was always like, they, they it was, to my, to my understanding, there was always a, a like a, it was just a, a handshake deal between, you know, publishing record labels and, and MTV of like, you play our music videos, promote our music, promote our artists, and you guys can use it for whatever you want. So mm. that was the deal. They stopped playing 
music videos. They stopped TRL. They stopped being like a tastemaker for right. music yeah. in the kind of what 2010 ish, I would say. Probably around maybe there, earlier. Just, yeah, maybe earlier. Then, I just the, the, don't know. He's like, mm, yeah, it was probably good. I wasn't listening to what you said. I was thinking about my tits. Life got sucked out of the whole network. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're not interested. They're not talking about Tom, so he ain't interested. And they never, what the, the biggest fuck up was, I, in my opinion, MTV couldn't see the writing on the wall mm -hmm. with the way the internet was kind of booming. Oh, Jason, you don't get in the shot, Jason, with the laptop. Look at him get all in Jack's business. The, the biggest fuck up was, I, in my opinion, MTV couldn't see the writing on the wall mm -hmm. with the way the internet was kind of Jason, booming. he had a Snuggie. You know he's got like a thong on. He's got to pull that shit out. Jason, get out of Jack's shot. They should have just, they should have done, I always said Jason, they down. should have done what um, BuzzFeed did. They should have gone down that like kitschy clickbaity type shit. Yeah. To stay relevant. Yeah, doing like the, the, the like what list. Harry Potter character are you? Yeah, yeah. Tom, you don't have to have an opinion about everything Jack brings up. Like yeah. what? Yes. They, they should have poured a ton of resources into that, but instead they did. What eighty? Yeah. What 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 love valid are you? Yeah. <laughs> like like with music. <laughs> totally. They, they should have done that, and they and I'm really surprised they didn't because it was always like a, like a lot of like young, forward-thinking people. But then all of a sudden they were just like you know, like behind the curve, way behind the curve, and also getting away from everything that made them cool, and that was like having cool like rock stars and like artists on and yeah. like making cool oh, God. i mean some of the documentaries oh, that came out of mtv were amazing yeah. yeah some of the shows like true life and yeah behind the video oh, i did like true life i did like that show i did like that i want to be a whatever. unplugged yeah yeah oh, my God. Unplugged. unplugged was great uh, unplugged was for some of the greatest performances oh, yeah. in the history lauren hill's unplugged nirvana's unplugged two of the best unplugged your music Without came from mtv unplugged yeah you know nirvana uh, wow. house and chains yeah. like every i mean they kind of brought it back they tried to it didn't it so just good. didn't hit because they brought it back too late because it's been too long yeah and then yeah. like the generation now doesn't like you know i would love if someone i would love i think the greatest thing ever if like if a genie said like here's a magic wand like what would you do i would love to be like hey let me go back in time and like try and stop mtv from dying <laughs> yeah that would actually be kind of a good premise for a movie that i would watch jack so if you don't make it i will but too late yeah man it's like nothing yeah Nothing like it. But yeah, I mean, like when we were on, it was jackass. He has nothing to bring to the table. Yeah, man. Yeah. 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 Huh. Yes. Uh, Tom Green. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, this is the Tom Green Show. It's not the Green Tom Show. This is my favorite show because it is my show. The Tom Green Show. That was epic. When he had the porn car and he went to his parents. I think he made their car the porn car and they had to take the bus and he drove the porn car to the bus stop. The Osbournes um trl like all that stuff so yeah we were in a really uh, andy uh andy what's andy dick oh not andy dick it was that little andy guy dick. oh yeah i remember that not yeah. andy dick it was andy that little guy uh, oh. his show so it was punked punked punk came out maybe was it yeah it was before us it was right before us so yeah well, it was, like did, you notice, did you notice with your show like I'm sure like it started off a certain way. How do you think it evolved? Do you think it became a little more like uh, produced? <laughs> we never produced. Actually. That's the thing. The like, 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 a, like a little soft uh, dire directed? We Tom never had Van. any direction. The only thing we had was oh producers. Oh my gosh, yes. Tom Sandy Butt and the Unwatchables. Oh my gosh, Unplugged. That would be awesome. Ryan Murphy's on it. Damn it, Ryan Murphy. He always steals Jack Osborne and then my ideas. Damn it, Ryan Murphy. <laughs> suggestions for, for like big picture things like can we go on a vacation with you guys will you guys do a dinner at the house this week and yeah, that yeah, was yeah. it it was never like can you do a dinner and can <laughs> kelly can you tell jack you think he's a dick for doing what he did last night mm -hmm. when you guys were out or like can you go do this thing that you know is really gonna piss off kelly it was never that it was never because it, it back then there was all this concern about how reality show was producing because the moment you gave suggestions it became scripted and it would unionize <laughs> that's how it was that early on oh, no, one wow. knew. no one knew because it was like you have people on camera you have people doing things on camera if you tell them to do it or give them point, you know, script mm -hmm. points, yeah. it's scripted. So it's going to be a scripted show. And so we had to really, there was all this, it just was free. And we would film from 9 a.m. to 2 o'clock in the morning. I remember the episode of the Osbournes where Kelly's sister or somebody, Jack and his friend, somebody made her an appointment for the gynecologist and she was mortified. She was like, I'm not going to the fucking gynecologist. They're like, make sure you have your vagina prepped. <laughs> they called to confirm her appointment and she was very upset and it was wow six days a week really six days a week we had three crews that came in around the clock there was three three camera teams no, for how, how many for how long like okay. how many months depending on filming. the series order but it was between three it was no it was between i think four and eight months 
depending on you set cameras there at all times. Everything all we did, everything, everything we did. Wow, Tom, you complain about always being around cameras, but it sounds like Jack Osborne was really always surrounded by cameras, and they could use anything. Wake wow. up, go to sleep. It was like well, how we did special forces, to be honest with you. Oh wow, and that long. The wow, whoa, wow, whoa. Did that drive you mad? Jason's getting jealous. You know, he's sitting there. He's like, Tom, what about me? Look at times, in, yeah. Look into my tits. Look into my cleavage, Tom. I got because this is when I started getting really into like drugs and alcohol, and I was really secretive, and I had this like it was a constantly a dance to be like, how do I get fucked up but not have them film me getting fucked up because that's highly illegal. And like <laughs> it was so I, it was like this strange dance. And how old were you when you started? I was just about well, let's see, we started filming in October of two thousand one, so it was about a month before I turned sixteen. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And uh, Whoa. It, wow. Yeah, wow. it just was this strange. Oh, wow. That's a lot of filming, but producers oh, aren't wow. like on your ass that entire time, are they? Uh, no, then they were very little interaction. The only thing they would be like, hey, I was like, oh, now they're on my ass. See, it was easier for you because back then they weren't on your ass, they're on my ass all the time. What are you guys doing today? We were like, oh, I've got, I've got to go to school. And then when I come home, I'm going to do homework. And it was, you feel pressure to be interesting. I feel like people no. in reality, I mean, you can speak to this. To no, they were one of the first. They didn't know if they were being interesting or not interesting. They were just being themselves, which happened to be very interesting. Jason, stop. Button up your shirt. Go home to your family. Feed the kids a Lunchable. Jeez, Jason. Be interesting. No. Or to be at that point. When you're filming, I would feel like at that point, like they didn't ask you, Tom. Jason was asking Jack. When you're just you're, starting, though, you, there was no, there was no formula. No. Thank you. I answered the question for him. Yeah, there's no formula. They didn't know about this, Jason. Oh my God, his shirt's too tight. It's cutting off all oxygen, everything going to the brain. Doesn't exist. One had done yeah. it. So did you wonder, like, why? I mean, I understand your parents, but even like the, your, I mean, you, you know, your family is so interesting. But when it's first starting, now we know. But at the beginning, it's like the people who don't know our family yeah. is will they find us all in? His dad bit off the head of a bat. Yeah, it's going to be interesting, Jason. Do your research. What are you talking about? He's known his dad was interesting. Thousands upon thousands of people pay to see him live. It's not like your karaoke shows where you got to hand out free tickets and 50 people show up if you're lucky. This is real entertainment, Jason. He knew from the time he was a little witty, witty, bitty baby that his family was interesting. Jason, stop. Jason, go put a sweatshirt on. Interesting. Did you have the pressure at all? No, and then just like, all of the the women stereotypes against him you know he's too busy worrying about his tits to actually educate himself I, my thing was like it's not that i was like will they find this industry i was just like this is like why why do they why do people want to see this <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> i was like i don't yeah, exactly. know i'm just this like a tit. i'm just fucking around right, like, right. Like, why am i involved with this and honestly the only box his tits jiggle and the it gets on button more the reason why i did it was i was about it's so distracting Okay, if you want to be taken seriously in this business, Jason, you got to button your tits up. All right? That's what they tell us. You got to do it too. Up to 10, 16. Because I can't stop looking at them. And I'm just a woman. I'm a woman. I don't I don't have that kind of control. I can't stop looking at your tots. Bouncing. Boop, 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 boop. I can't stop. Don't stop. I know, like, the, mm -hmm. the offer that we'd got was, hey, you're going to make thirty to $50,000. Oh yeah, we'll get you a car. That was it. That was it. I was <laughs> oh like, oh my God, it's a million dollars. I'm going to be at that age. We, yeah, when oh you were 15, 16 years old, someone's like, we're going to give you 50 G's. I was like, I'm going to buy myself the greatest car. <laughs> it's it's going to be awesome. I'm going to da 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 this, that, and the other. And then <laughs> we ended up getting a whole lot. Here's an interesting story. We filmed the entire <laughs> first season and it aired without us signing a single release. Oh, shit. Oh, we had them completely shit. by the balls. <gasps> oh, oh, my God. And MTV <laughs> knew it. And that, that's why we own the show today. <sighs> oh, wow. We own the original series complete in its entirety. Like, Way to go. Way to go, Osborns. Yeah, Letty. But did you ever feel like your mojo was gone, bruh? And then you had to have a little affair on your girlfriend, who you live with, who you've been for nine years. When your grandma died, you got to bang her friend. You ever felt like that? It's hard, dude. Wow, that's right. right. amazing. And so if we... Amazing. If uh, we, at one point, the head of MTV, we were doing TRL in New York. Somebody got fired for that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Actually, I don't think anyone did because it was kind of... We just kind of kept dying. Oh, yeah, we'll sign it. We'll sign it. We'll sign it. And we started filming in October and it aired in March. And it was a real Lightning. quick, like, things. Yeah, you guys had a quick turnaround. Yeah, it, was, it moved lightning fast. And and then it aired. And then I think they were like, wait, they never signed it because everything was moving at a million miles an hour. And no one realized what it was that it would that we were doing and what it would be. And we, my dad, we were doing TRL in New York to promote the show. And we'd, the head of MTV called my dad up to the office. And and I don't know, he got separated from my mom, whatever. And he ended up in the head of MTV. I think it was either Brian Graydon or Van Toffler one of the, I forget whose, office. And they handed my dad a check and they were like, hey, we just want to thank you for all the hard work you've done. It was for like 250 grand. Mm. And it was for all of us for the first season. So they were, they were trying basically, here you go, we paid you. And my dad, you know, every, you know, I think it's a bit of a, a conception that my dad's a bit like oblivious to things, but my dad certainly is not. And he knew what was happening. He's He's been involved in enough negotiations. Oh, oh yeah, I'm sure. He's oh, been, yeah, he sat across yeah. the table too many times. 
And in the elevator on the way down, he just took, and he was alone too. It was like him and like his assistant. He just took the check out of his pocket and like ripped it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Never God. cashed it because he was like, we have them by the balls. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah. So we got. Wow. That's what I did to my mom when I made her give me $250,000 so I could open up another bar I wasn't going to be a part of and really use the money to pay people to go on tour with me to sing karaoke songs. Allegedly. Got paid a, a lot of money and owned the show. And that's amazing. I got my mom by the ovaries because I owe her 250 or maybe she's got me by either way. I'm not paying her allegedly. Dang. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm so bored. He's like, that's amazing. But I wish we were talking about me. Season was Mojo. Because he was like, we have them by the balls. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jason says, oh, yeah. Like, time by the balls. So we got got paid a, a lot of money and owned the show. And that's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. I'm, gonna, I'm so bored. It's not about me. Somewhere. Seasons, was it? It was. We did. <laughs> Can you do a little research on your guest? Jeez. It, it, three and three and a half. Wow. And then we stopped wow. it. Wow. Why yeah. would you stop it? It, I, you know, it was that thing where we kind of, we honestly just pulled the page out of the office. The British office stopped after like three seasons at its. That is what Ricky Gervais shows tend to do. Yeah. Height at its most successful where my mom was like, hey, you know, our numbers had not really gone down. You know, we'd had the huge spike where we got like crazy, crazy views and they kind of plateaued around like in the threes and like three billion kind of thing. And, and three billion. Tom don't know life like that. He got three people at his last karaoke show. Oh. So we were like, let's just let's be that's we're good. Well, we don't want we don't want to get canceled. So we're going to just end on top like versus nice. letting it die slowly. It was like a, it was a calculated. <laughs> Tom's like, oh, on top. I like to be on top. Jason likes. I'm on top. Decision of like, you know, I I turned 18, Kelly was 19, she was making music and like touring and everyone forgets that like Kelly had like a really successful music career yeah, for a period yeah. of time. And so yeah. she was Yeah. Tom would love to have Kelly Osbourne's um successful music career. Like, yeah, you think she would perform with Tom Sandoval and the Unwatchables? Performing with like Robbie Williams in Europe playing Holy like shit. she played Kelly opened up for Robbie Williams four days in a row at Nebworth, which is the largest concert in British history for a single artist. Wow. She played 250,000 people. 250,000? Tom, Tom's like, whoa, I'd be happy if I got tw 25 people there that paid. Cause I gotta pay these guys. I gotta, I still owe Jason. Four days in a row. Holy shit. God. Yeah, yeah. That's like, like God, that's like way more than we get. Huge. All of Coachella. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just like, all of Coachella. Huh. <laughs> That's yeah. all like uh, six stages at Coachella. Yeah. It was like he, Kelly was like massive with, with, with music and she was doing TV. And I then started doing TV in England. How do you like see her? We used the launching platform. <laughs> How do you like see her? Platform from the Osbournes and I. We all kind of just went and did our own thing. So you think about our show, that's the, I, I would like that format. The game's changed and networks are just, they're behind the curve. That's, yeah. just, that's, that's the plain and simple fact of it. And, and the fact that like right now, we're recording this in the comfort of a studio, mm -hmm. talking about whatever the fuck you want. You don't have to appease anyone, and you're gonna walk away and you're gonna own it. Yeah, own it. You know, for the you know, I don't know what your guys' deal is, but like, own yeah, it. it's it's putting the power into the content creator is something that networks have tried to remove for years because they wanted all the power. Yeah, yeah, and now like that's that you know that's going away. So it's like you gotta like accept it in a sense. No, you don't have to accept it, Tom. You can fight the power. Oh my God! You just gotta kind of accept it, right? Because I I asked for a producer credit, and uh, yeah, you gotta just you don't do nothing. No, workers' rights. The writers are on strike. The actors are well, the writers aren't anymore, but the actors still are on strike. You reality TV people should get together, unionize, Tom. You dumb dumb. My husband says hi. Show, can I buy that necklace with nipples on it? No, you cannot. No, you cannot, child. No, you cannot. You're better than that, child. You're too good for that necklace. All right. I guess you just gotta accept it. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 Crazy time. Yeah. yeah. In the world, of, in the words of the office, crazy world, a lot of smells. Yeah. <laughs> That's very true. Um, well, yeah. I guess uh, I guess it's a good time to wrap up. But uh, yeah. dude, it's been awesome hanging out with you, man. Absolutely. Thanks so much for uh, for coming on, man. No worries. Yeah, I'm glad. Tom's like, well, dude, you're not really interested in talking about me, so I guess we'll just go home. This notice how this is the shortest episode of Everybody Loves Tom, and it is like Wanda is saying the most interesting episode because. Um, finally talking about something else other than Tom. But he was like, this, I can't do this. Unless it's about me, I can't do it. Well, yeah, I'm glad we got to like, the thing I like, <laughs> I, I, had, I had Kelly on my podcast and it's very like cathartic doing like a debrief about our experiences on the show. 
because you're like, oh. I would love to just hear about Jack's experience on the show without Tom interrupting or Jason's tits being so distracting. I would love that. Okay, like I can talk to someone who like experienced exactly what I experienced. So it's, it's, it's very therapeutic. Yeah, definitely. And our biggest takeaway from this? Yeah. No more scandal. Just your fuck up. Just fuck up. Just your fuck up, dude. Yeah, one of many. He's not going to do it, Jack. He's He's not emotionally evolved. He's not, he doesn't have EQ. He doesn't have an emotional intelligence. He just doesn't want to be. <laughs> one thing. Here's to many more. Yes, uh, many more. Uh, I'm just about cheers. To no more fuck up. <laughs> what? No, you're covering up your tits. Why are you playing so hard to get, Jason? I'll show you were just letting them loose and jiggle, and now we're covering up. Close the laptop and put it next to you. Why are you doing this to us? Uh, <laughs> cheers. To many more fuck ups. Many more fuck ups. <laughs> This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous that this man holds a laptop like this. Who have you seen ever do this? This is very unprofessional, Jason. Let your tits out. Tits out for the boys. I said tits out for the boys. Uh uh. Tits out for the boys. I said tits out for the boys. Uh uh. Here's everyone. Oh my god, you guys. I am so sorry that we had to go through that together. I'm glad we did it together. But oh my goodness, Jack. Um, good to hear you have a podcast. I'll probably check that out because it seems like you have lots of interesting things to say and insight. And you've done incredible work on yourself and congratulations on 20 years of sobriety. That is no easy feat, but I know that you know that you are uh, the best person you could possibly be right now because of it. So shout out to you, sir. And Tom, quit saying you're sober. You don't know the first thing about sobriety. We don't even know if it's true. I'm tired of hearing about it. And don't even mention your sobriety in the company of someone like Jack who has been really committed uh, to that and recovery for that long. It is a joke, a joke. It was still tits up, fun for Jolene, tits up, fun for Jolene. Oh, Jason, I really thought he was going to leave and his wife had paid attention, heed my warnings, but no. And it's always on a Coachella scale or Rochella. Aha, yes. Yes, yes, yes. How do we think Jack feels about being a reality TV pioneer, knowing Tom Sandoval is the end result? Well, I think he saw the whole system devolve as it does. And so now, you know, the worst of the worst. I mean, as he was saying, we went out on a high. We had the production, you know, everything by the balls. We had MTV by the balls. We left when we were high ratings. And now it has devolved, unfortunately, into anybody and everybody who just wants to be famous for anything and they don't care. And uh, then they want all of our sympathy while run into the bank. So, yes, the chat always makes it fun. You guys make it fun. I did have a good time roasting and recapping this episode. Please hit that like. We must beat Tom Sandoval, who we did give him a pity like. So he has 398 likes. Let's see if we can get more. And I can't believe this dude has under, like he hasn't even, let's see if we helped him hit 10,000 views. Let's just take a look. This is sad, Tom. Okay, he has hit, no, five days ago, Tom. My big brother reviews get better than this. Come on, Tom, 9.98 thousand views. This is really, it's not good, Tom. That's not good. With all the reach you have, you're on, you know, three TV shows and this is, it's bad. It's not good, it's not good. But uh, we did enjoy uh, Jack Osborne. So shout out to Jack Osborne. So sorry uh, you had to you had to go through that. And thank you, Jack, for um, beating up Tom. We appreciate it. Allegedly. Allegedly, we all appreciate it. And I appreciate all of you. <laughs> all right, you guys. Um, leave your comments after the uh, video posts. Give, uh, we'll have the topic for the comment section be, give Tom Sandoval your best life advice. It can be for real. It can be for fake. It can be anything you'd like, but please sound off in the comment section um, after the video posts and give him your best life advice. I'll be back later this week when Tom Sandoval, unfortunately, posts another episode, episode four of his Everybody Loves Tom podcast. And then I'm also going to start uh, talking about House of Villains and obviously Big Brother and all kinds of Bravo housewife shows. So smash that bell so you're notified every time I get, go live or post a new video. Thank you guys so much for your support. And always remember to enjoy yourself because it's later than you think. Bye. If you like what you see.